Let's try that again! Welcome, everyone, to the Omniverse of Nick and part four to What If Vegeta Became Immortal. Hope you guys like the Madison and Troy intro because we're gonna get a funny little outro at the end to show how awesome Troy is, really, is why I did that. Anyway, before we begin today's video, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the Omniverse of Nick so you guys can help me make this channel bigger, better, and get more awesome stories pumping out and get to recommend your own and so on and so forth. So, let's begin today's episode where we have just gotten into the Boo Arc and Deborah, with Bobbity's magic, has become immortal. Because since we never saw any true exclusive magic from Bobbity and Deborah, a very lack of it, I just pretty much threw in the bone of Bobbity being able to turn Deborah immortal by seeing Piccolo and looking into Vegeta's mind. Then, we get into the Gohan and Deborah fight, which Gohan, I feel, would still want to fight Deborah, and it pretty much goes the same, except for the fact that his Gohan is much stronger here with Vegeta actually training him, even if Chi-Chi is being a freaking, you know, her about it, you know? But Gohan's base form is actually able to hold his own much more better, but Gohan notices something. Even though he seems to be at a good advantage, not really getting true hits in, but they're kind of even, he's not hurting Deborah. He keeps coming back up. Then he tries Super Saiyan, and then Super Saiyan 2. And he's getting stronger, but it's still not doing anything. And then he turns up the heat. Super Saiyan 3. And at this point, Deborah is actually scared. Because even though he's immortal, he's half faking it, really, because he knows he can just heal from it. But this does actually surprise him, as would anybody. Who wouldn't be scared of seeing a Super Saiyan 3 Gohan or Vegeta or something? But even after that, being leagues above Deborah at this point, it's still not anything. He's still not hurting Deborah. He just, just keeps getting back up. And it's at this point... Gohan's starting to realize what has happened to Deborah. And now, with Gohan's stamina draining, even if Super Saiyan... Because Super Saiyan 3 is more strenuous on Gohan than Vegeta, because Vegeta is immortal. So Deborah begins to turn the tide with his stamina, at least, and starts to spit and use other tactics. And Piccolo, at this point, is like, nah, I gotta help Gohan and transforms into his potential unleashed form and goes to rush in to save him. Now it's at this point that Gohan still has plenty of strength and Piccolo is leagues above him as well, but Deborah begins to power up and turn the tide because even if Piccolo's immortal, Gohan, this is just a chance to get extra energy because if there's another immortal being and Gohan's beginning to lose stride, this is Deborah's chance to get their energy complete, even if Piccolo's would be hard to get because he's immortal. And Vegeta is beginning to get angry at this because Gohan's losing his stride. Bobbity must have cheated to get immortality, either from him or Piccolo. And the fact that this fight is just a standstill now, pretty much between Deborah and Piccolo, and neither one's making any leeway except for Piccolo maybe being a lot stronger. And it's at this point that Bobbity's looking into Vegeta's mind more with his immortality and anger, and teleports them back, and begins to put Vegeta under his control. Deborah smirks at this and knew that the plan was a success. You see, Deborah this time didn't have to look into Vegeta's thoughts after Gohan and him fought like in canon. Since him and Bobbity were touching upon Piccolo and Vegeta's immortality, they also looked into Vegeta's thoughts, and Vegeta's not a full-fledged good guy here. He only became a good guy much more reluctantly because Goku forced his hand with strength. But here, Vegeta's heart would be speaking out a lot more, and not even just about Goku, but just who he was. So, he's easier to control. And thus we get Majin Immortal Vegeta. 
Bobbity then uses his magic and teleports them all to the World Martial Arts Arena. Deborah hardly being a need now, considering the strongest guy on their team, who is immortal, is now Bobbity's pet. Then, Vegeta begins to attack the stands, the people, and pretty much that whole thing goes on, except we have a bigger group here, so we get more of reaction. Goku is then forced to provoke the Supreme Kai out of stopping him from fighting Vegeta, and then we get the Goku versus Majin Vegeta fight, except I'll get more on it in a minute. Then Android 17 and 18, along with 16, Piccolo, and Gohan, all lead the charge against Bobbity and Deborah, and stopping Boo from being awoken. Now this is much easier with more people, but they still have to go through some floors. And while everyone else takes on the immortal Deborah, Supreme Kai offers to fight Bobbity on his own and stop him. Meanwhile, we get the Goku versus Majin Vegeta fight. And Majin Vegeta's immortal here, and he's had way more training than he did in the Boo arc. Not by true true much, but he is still a good deal stronger than Goku, and he is immortal, so that definitely hinders Goku winning this fight. But Goku told him once, and he'll tell him again. Immortality only means something if you have the strength and tactics to put behind it. And Goku turns Super Saiyan 2 and ups the game. And when that doesn't begin to work, he then splits himself into four different copies along his own. This is a Yard Rat technique. Because Goku actually did much more Yard Rat training than Instant Transmission because of Vegeta's immortality. He was willing to stick around this time. And Vegeta, even with this, is still not deterred. Oh, true, it catches him a bit off game, but it's not enough. Then, Goku transforms into a giant version of himself. And no, 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 this is not that Mastered Ultra Instinct copy, even though the picture is. This is gigantification from Yardrat, which is another technique. And this actually surprises Vegeta, because even if it's not causing lasting damage, Goku definitely has the skills and strength and tactics to put him off of his game. And Vegeta knows that Goku's not going to go all for killing attacks. So he's not going to get the Zenkais that he wants to exploit with immortality. This is exactly what Goku was talking about. So Vegeta decides to up his game and end this now and transforms into Majin Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta. And it's at this point that the tides start to turn real fast. Goku knows he was very surprised, let alone to see Gohan become a Super Saiyan 3. But he should have known that with Vegeta around, he was the one who probably taught him because he became it first. After Goku died, Vegeta was pretty much the strongest left. It was necessary and everything. So he sees that there's absolutely no choice, even if he's got less than a day on Earth. He turns into Super Saiyan 3 himself, which surprises Vegeta, but doesn't throw him off because he became it pretty much first, to his knowledge. And then we get Super Saiyan 3 Goku versus Super Saiyan 3 Majin Immortal Vegeta, which would be an, an epic clash to say the least. 17 and 18 with their infinite energy and everyone else, manage to throw off Deborah, and they manage to hold their own. But all of this doesn't stop the resurrection of Boo because of Super Saiyan 3 Goku and a much stronger Vegeta with the power of Super Saiyan 3 himself. And with Super Saiyan 3 Gohan and all the energy, especially from Yamu and Spopovich, it should have been a given that Boo would be resurrected, literally. And we then get the resurrection of Majin Buu. But will he even be the threat that he was with Vegeta? Even if Goku returns to Otherworld with a Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta, an immortal Piccolo, a Super Saiyan 3 Gohan, and the androids, will Buu even be a threat? And if he is, what happens if he manages to absorb one of these strong fighters? Find out in the next episode. You guys didn't think this was the end of the video, did you? Well, the Omniverse of Nick has a new feature.
a sneak peek at what's next to arrive.